There's a number of performing rights societies around the world, and I think most folks are vaguely aware of, of what the names and the, and the entities are, but they're not quite as certain about what it is they do. So describe for us what it is that a performing arts society does for its members. Sure. I mean, at the simplest and most basic uh, form of a PRO is to collect and distribute public performance royalties. And to be more specific on that, uh, we are going to represent uh, independent songwriters, uh, composers, uh, and as well as publishers, and their interests in the public performance royalty that's guaranteed by the U.S. copyright. So essentially, instead of each individual uh, member of, at ASCAP having to go out and negotiating a license with every bar and grill, with every radio station, with every television station, we're actually going to do that all. And the main thing I think uh, that has kind of been lost in translation over the years is the importance of collective bargaining. That's really what the PROs bring to the table. Now, you mentioned briefly there, you know, I just want to recap them so people are clear on it. Who, who are the people that you collect from at the end of the day? Sure, yeah. I, well, literally, the easiest answer is everyone. <laughs> That's probably the easiest way to think of it. But essentially, if, if they're having a performance of music for the public, we are there to license and collect those royalties on behalf of our members, our writer and publisher members. So, uh, for example, you know, uh, every bar and grill that you can think of, every cafe, every, like I said, radio station, television station, internet websites, any place where their use of music has been uh, defined as a public performance, ASCAP can represent our members and go and collect that money and distribute it. Would that include live performances? Absolutely. That's, that's, that's probably uh, the most important thing to ASCAP in some ways because that was the genesis of ASCAP in 1914, almost 100 years ago, was really about live performance. Obviously, these days uh, we see performances in all these other media, but at the time there wasn't radio and television, so of course uh, live performance was the primary source of income. Okay, so now I, I've been in the business now for, for 35 years, Sean, and... Uh, I wouldn't claim to be the smartest guy in the world, but I'm, I'm not the dumbest either. Um, how, does, how are these payments calculated? It, it, I think it's something of a mystery about, you know, how some, once they've made the performances, how you go about calculating um, where these performances happen and how to pay your artists. Yeah, of course. I, I don't think you're alone in that uh, uh, difficulty in understanding or comprehending how we do it. Um, on, on, a, on a very kind of uh, surface basis, without going into details, because each media is going to have slightly different rules, the best way to understand the concept is follow the dollar. And what I mean by that is we're going to pay you the monies that we, you know, pay our members based upon the performances that occur in that specific licensee. So, for example, when someone has a performance on NBC, that network, that's a network performance. We're going to take the money out of that exact license fee that NBC pays us. And we're trying to take that NBC pie, if you will, and slice it up into pieces that uh, reflect the licensing value of those p the performances of the music in on NBC. When you talk about you know radio station like K Rock in Los Angeles, uh, same thing applies. Obviously, they pay a different license fee, so the uh, amount of money is based upon that. But then you also talk about other factors that we use such as you know duration and time of day uh, time of day only applies in television we use these other factors to help us better calculate the uh, value of these performances to those licensees but at the end of the day we're really looking at it from the point of view of how can we reflect the true value of this performance if ASCAP wasn't the one licensing it you know what what is that value if the uh, network decided that they were going to do it themselves. They were going to distribute those royalties to all the, the songwriters and composers and publishers. Obviously, that's a Herculean task for every one of those licensees, and it's, it's probably, shouldn't even say probably, it's, it's wasteful of money to have each of those doing that administration individually. That's really the, one of the core concepts of ASCAP doing it. And again, like I said, I think the collective bargaining from the members, from the writer and publisher member side, that's really an important factor because uh, when, when I talk about this in lectures or anything else, I always tell people, you know, if you have a performance that's equal to a performance by Beyonce, you get paid the same amount of money as Beyonce. Now, 
I don't know of any other part in the music business where you're going to get that without having the same representation, clout, et cetera, as Beyonce. So this is a really important concept um, where, you know, really you have a symbiotic relationship between all writers and publishers. It's, like I said, it's really a core part of our business. Now, I think that's easier to get a grasp on if you're talking about a TV appearance. You know, young band appears on NBC, um, Tonight Show or David right. Letterman. They're still going to see the same number of people as Beyonce. But that's there are right. other areas where not all artists are created equal. And one in particular is at radio. Um, how, how do you, how do you, is, you know, how do you get the proper, you know, number to each of the people? Because clearly Beyonce is getting more plays than artists, you know, a brand new artist, for example. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a good point. It really, at the end of the day, it comes down to eyeballs. You know, that's probably the easiest way to think about it. Or really, when you talk about music, you know, your ears. <laughs> um, how many people are actually paying attention? When you talk about a performance on television, to your point, you know, it airs on NBC. There's going to be millions of people watching that and hearing that music and that's part of what they sell to their advertisers. When you talk about radio stations, this is also similar. A larger radio station has a uh, expected, you know, output to the audience of a certain volume, and that might be different on a large radio station versus a small, smaller radio station. And again, that's going to ref be reflected in how much we charge them the license fee, and therefore will also be reflected in how we distribute those royalties from that license fee. Um, Really, again, the main thing to understand here is it is about volume. When you talk about uh, having one performance on K-Rock, going back to my example of the Los Angeles radio station earlier, you're going to have a value that's greater than one performance on a radio station that's a tenth of the size. And I know that sounds obvious, but I think, honestly, that's something that commonly gets lost in translation. People want everything to be paid equally. And as you said, um, while the performance may be equal, the artist or... Um, the music may not be based upon how the audience reacts. If the audience wants to hear, you know, this song 10 times a day, it's going to make more money than the song they only want to hear once in a year. Got it. All right, well, and that's, I think, the part that's always kind of mysterious, how, how you guys calculate. But, you know, ASCAP's been around for years, folks, and they're a well-trusted organization out there.